built for $20 billion in 1994, Kansai International Airport was an engineering marvel, a man-made island in the middle of the sea. But just three decades later, it has already sunk over 11 meters, and experts now warn, if left unchecked, parts of the airport could reach sea level by 2056. What went wrong beneath the waves of Osaka Bay? Can engineers save it? Before we dive deeper into how engineers are racing to keep Kansai above water, if you're enjoying this story, consider subscribing. Stick around. What comes next might just change how you see airports forever. Why would anyone risk building a massive airport on an ocean sponge? Because Osaka had no choice. In the post-war boom of the 1960s, Osaka was Japan's powerhouse. Japan's second largest city was a hub of trade, technology and tightly packed chaos. The existing airport, Itami, was bursting at the seams, but boxed in by mountains and water, there was no room to expand. So Japan made a bold decision, create a new airport on reclaimed land, artificial islands built from sand and soil in Osaka Bay. It was a leap into the unknown, planned over 20 years and built in seven, costing $40 billion in today's money. Two giant islands were formed, protected by an 11 kilometer seawall of massive interlocking concrete tetrapods designed to calm the crashing ocean waves. This wasn't just infrastructure, it was engineering history. Imagine building a skyscraper on a sponge and then pouring buckets of water on it every day. That's what engineers were up against. The clay beneath Osaka Bay wasn't just soft, it was unpredictable. So the new problem is how to predict the compression of deep-seated old stiff clay. That's, uh, I think, the first case in the human engineering history. Some sections compacted slowly, others collapsed suddenly. Even slight differences in composition, a little more sand here, a little less water there, caused parts of the island to settle unevenly. That's when engineers realized they weren't just fighting gravity, they were fighting time. Every month, the island sank a little more. The pressure from millions of tons of earth dumped to form the airport's artificial islands pushed water out of the clay layers, squeezing them tighter and causing the ground to sink. To tackle this, engineers installed an army of one million sand drains, narrow vertical columns filled with sand designed to act like straws, sucking water out from the clay to speed up this consolidation. Without this, the land would have continued sinking for decades, making construction impossible. But these sand drains weren't permanent. Once they had done their job of pulling out water and compacting the clay, the engineers carefully removed them from the seabed. With the clay layer consolidated as much as possible, the next step was to start filling in the reclaimed land with earth and rock. Over three years, an enormous volume, about 180 million cubic meters, roughly 75 times the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza, was dumped onto the site to build up the artificial island. To shield this fragile creation, an 11 kilometer seawall made of 48,000 massive interlocking concrete tetrapods was erected designed to absorb and break the force of powerful ocean waves. Even with all this preparation, the island continued to settle more than expected. By the time it opened in 1994, it had already dropped over eight meters, taller than a two or three story building. Today, the first island has sunken by more than 13 meters, and the second island, what built later to increase capacity, has sunk even more, over 17 meters in total. That's roughly the height of a five-story building disappearing into the sea. This relentless battle with nature shaped every inch of Kansai Airport's design. So, how do you build a world-class airport on slowly sinking mud with innovation, flexibility, and a lot of engineering brilliance? Connecting the airport to the mainland is the remarkable Skygate Bridge R, a 3.75 kilometer long bridge that stands as an engineering marvel in its own right. Spanning the ocean, this massive steel bridge carries road and rail traffic, ensuring the flow of passengers, cargo and supplies to the reclaimed islands. It was built to withstand harsh weather and seismic shocks 
anchoring Kansai Airport firmly to Japan's transportation network. The terminal building designed by Renzo Piano takes inspiration from the ocean itself with a wave-shaped roof that uses natural airflow to cool the interior, cutting energy costs dramatically. Beneath the terminal, nearly 1,000 hydraulic jacks silently adjust its foundation, keeping the massive structure level as the ground beneath shifts and sinks. Unlike traditional concrete runways that crack under stress, Kansai's are paved with flexible asphalt engineered to bend and flex during earthquakes. This flexibility paid off during the devastating 1995 Kobe earthquake. The nearby city was severely damaged, but Kansai Airport stood firm, ready to serve. A true engineering marvel, but nature wasn't done yet. In 2018, nature's fury forced Kansai Airport to its knees, a stark reminder that even the greatest engineering feats are tested by the elements. Winds of up to 172 kilometers per hour whipped up seas, pounded the coastline and destroyed ships as Typhoon Jebi struck Japan. The winds over 170 kilometers per hour slammed into Kansai Airport, sending massive waves crashing over its seawalls. Flood waters inundated runways and critical underground infrastructure, silencing this vital transport hub. For two weeks, Kansai, the key global gateway to Osaka and the Kansai region, was out of action. Flights were cancelled, travellers stranded, and the region's economy shaken. Passengers sheltered inside the terminal, with some even sleeping through the storm's rage. The disaster exposed vulnerabilities in flood defences and sparked a massive $609 million upgrade to renew and raise seawalls, reinforce the runways and prepare Kansai for future storms. Kansai isn't just about engineering, it's got surprises that make it uniquely human. Did you know Kansai has a hotel room with runway views, where guests can watch planes taxi just outside their window, or that the airport sports its own Ferris wheel? a rare airport amusement where riders see jets take off from the sky. And amidst all the chaos, Kansai boasts Japan's most punctual flight operations, a feat of precision only possible through relentless innovation. Passengers even slept through the chaos of Typhoon Jebi flooding in 2018, a quiet testament to the airport's resilience. Keeping the airport above water comes with a hefty price tag and no easy answers. It's not just the initial $40 billion cost, Kansai spends hundreds of millions continuously to stay afloat. A $609 million project is raising seawalls and reinforcing runways to protect against flooding, but the land still settles unevenly, sinking about six centimeters per year on the first island. Engineers debate, keep investing millions to raise protections or risk losing a crucial gateway to nature's unrelenting forces. The airport's fate will come down as much to economics as engineering. Despite the sinking, Kansai remains critical. It connects Japan with nearly 100 cities worldwide. And with Osaka hosting Expo 2025, Kansai will play a starring role. But the airport story has sparked bigger questions. What if floating airports are the future? Japan, India and the UK are exploring airports that literally float, using buoyancy, modular platforms and climate resilience to defy rising seas. These futuristic airports may owe their existence to Kansai, a project that proved we could build the impossible, even if it sinks a little in the process. We have a video on the engineering behind the world's most insane floating islands and dams. It's already up, and it's the perfect follow-up to this story. You'll find the link below. So will Kansai stay above water for another 50 years? Or will the sea finally reclaim it? Either way, its legacy is already written, an island airport that taught the world what's possible and what it costs. If you enjoyed this journey, hit subscribe for more unbelievable megastructures and the stories behind them.